Paul said in Romans 5, chapter 5, verse 10, he said, we shall be saved by his life. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And uh, I suppose the intercessory work of Christ uh, is probably the most single of important thing I, I mean i don't want to like say this is more important than something else but this has got to be the most single important thing that a believer must be a, to know of, to be aware of i say this coming out of a situation where i, I don't think i've it might have been my fault maybe i wasn't listening maybe i wasn't there that day but i i never heard anything about the intercessory work of christ and i'll tell you if you uh, don't understand you know this it, it can it you're really uh you're really lacking uh, this scripture is a continuing thought. This, this verse 10 is a continuing thought of the previous verses that all the things that Jesus had done, Paul is talking about there in that little section, he's, how that Jesus had changed our status uh, before God. Uh, and the point he makes is we, at a time when we were powerless to do it, uh, Paul also makes a point that it was, it was, it was, it was done, what Jesus done was done uh, with, without any regard to any goodness that was in us also. Um, and you can, you can see that Paul doesn't actually say it, but, um, but the very best of men, with the, well, we were still by nature contrary to God, is what he's saying. And then this is the context where Jesus did this. Uh, Paul said in this verse, before Christ's death, we were enemies of God, and we, we, we opposed God. We were in opposition to God by the very by the very way we lived and by the very way we thought and everything. We were the enemies of God, but through the death of Jesus, now He reconciled us to God, and so He He, he actually what Jesus done He He um, He He made peace between God and man on the cross is where Jesus did this, and He brought uh, mankind into harmony with God, and this was done. Paul said while we were sinners. Paul said that men were made better at the cross when, uh, when Jesus died. Uh, at the cross, men were made better. We were brought to be in accord with the Father. This, the possibility to be at one with him now was, was possible. This is at what Jesus did at the cross. And he goes on to say that uh, if while we were in this condition, alienated from God, that Jesus reconciled us, how much more then will we be saved by his life? Now that, now that Jesus has... He died on the cross. He was resurrected. Now he's alive. And if he done this work, this great work at the cross, now what can we expect for him to do now? Um, if at his death we were, we were made at peace with the Father, he did this when he died, how much more powerful work would be accomplished now with his, with his life? This is what uh, we think about. Reconciled to God. Now that the righteousness requirements of the law have been satisfied and that God is just, now... Uh, transgression and sin and uh, all these things have been put away it, the enmity that existed between God and man that's been resolved um, now now we can we can look to some really good things to happen from this it, I, I looked at it maybe it was like a two part thing mm -hmm. first, the first part Christ did yeah. was that he had to get get man in position to be saved right. so he had to like yeah. remove the sin he had to, to solve this alien this alienation problem between God and man. They, he's got all this solved. Now he's going to save man. Yeah. You know and that wasn't very clear to me. And you know some some well not very long ago actually. So this is becoming more clear to me. Yeah. And um, but this man because he continueth ever hath an unchangeable priesthood it says in, in Hebrews seven twenty four wherefore he is able also to save them. To the uttermost. And Brother Gibbons says the uttermost what? The uttermost extent he is able to save them. That come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth, to make intercession for them. We have one who is able to save us from death to life. Since he himself was dead and now lives forevermore. The scriptures say he, he saves us through intercession. That's, he actually says that there. It's through the intercession that he's saving men. By his death, he reconciled us to God. Through his life of intercession, he saves us. He is able to do so, for he has overcome the world. Number one, he has overcome the world himself. And number two, he's conquered death himself. So he's able to save men. 
because he always lives to intercede for them, he is able to save completely, completely those who have come to God through him. Now, Jesus is eager to save. You have to see this. He is eager to save just as eager as he was for the cross, to die on the cross. He is just as equally uh, eager to save now that he's resurrected. You know, we remember that his faith was steadfast to Jerusalem in his last trip. He, had, he was urged, he, went, uh, that he was compelled, and he was urged for the cross. Mo he was moved mm -hmm. in that direction to do this work at the cross. Now, that's the same uh, state of mind Jesus is in now in yeah. saving us. So he is, he is compelled. He, he is urged to do this mm -hmm. for the Father. Uh, we look at the consistency and the faithfulness of God all through the record. We see it in Jesus Christ. Uh, and we, do, we, can, we can understand then how faithful and how consistent he is to save us. He is able to save to the uttermost all who come to God. Now, he's been given all the power and authority. You know what? Understand, you want to understand this also. Now, he doesn't lack. He's been given all authority. Whatever he, all, everything has been put under his uh, control. Mm -hmm. So whatever he needs, whatever, whatever, act, whatever acts that he's, he's been made available mm -hmm. to, to, to get all the resources and, and to bring about the salvation that he wants to do. So he's wide open. To, to, to do it. So now we have all these things for us. Um, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are without sin. And we want to consider this also, that now Jesus understands what it's like to be in the flesh. Um, he knows the flesh. He experienced it. He was tempted in, point, in every point like we were, so then he understands uh, what we... Uh, uh, how, how it is. Sometimes we can get into a situation, a pretty tough situation. It doesn't be, it doesn't have to be some kind of serious transgression. It, we can just get off, we can just get off beat a little bit, so to speak, and uh, and and we can we can be victim to just a lot of uh, criminating thinking and just uh, you know. But see now, Jesus, we can count on Him to save us. Amen. Okay, we can we can come to Him. We can, we can just pray for grace. You know, just, I mean, you ain't got any other place to go, and you just come to him and just pray I, 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 for grace. Uh, get me out of this situation. Uh, you know, what, whatever it is. And, the, and he, he's going to be uh, compelled to do that. He's, he wants to do this. See? So uh, this is a, a source of encouragement. Um, we're not left here on our own. Yeah. Brother Ricky said, I didn't leave you. I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. Yeah. So Jesus has not left us here by ourselves. That's right. Uh, you know, we we can be surrounded by brethren, and but still we can we can we can have a need. Yeah. But Jesus, he he understands that, and he's uh, he's he'll save us. Sometimes you know you just want to just say, Lord, save me, just like Peter did. You know, he was right there with the Lord, but he called, he saved me. I I, I need you to save me. And sometimes you you compelled to do that yourself. So he's right there, ready to do this. Uh, yet a little while. And the world seeth me no more. You know the context in which he said this. That credible scripture in John 14. He's talking to disciples. Mm -hmm. The world seeth me no more. But ye see me. Yeah. Because I live. Ye shall live also. And that's some of his departing words. His final words to the brethren. And he said because I live. Yeah. You'll live also. Mm -hmm. And so we have this promise. I, I wanted to do this. You, uh, for my own benefit I suppose. That you know. Uh, Christ is interceding for us, mm -hmm. and he is, he is just as urgent to do so as, as he was everything else he did. And so, brethren, be encouraged that we have a, we have a Savior that's uh, saving us.